The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. And we're back. Talking about uh, the software-defined enterprise, what's going on in cloud computing. The segment we're going to dig into now is an uh, interesting startup out of the valley uh, that sits at that intersection of software-defined environments, uh, what's happening in the open source community. Uh, joining me for this segment is Doug Falstrom, uh, who is the Senior Director of Product Management from Coho Data. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stu. Very excited to be here. Yeah, so uh, for, for those that don't know Coho, uh, you know, uh, Andy was uh, one of the founders of Zen. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, and you guys have a software-defined storage solution that also has software-defined networking in, involved in how uh, everything's laid out. Uh, so that, that, that's my thumbnail on it. Can, can you <laughs> get, tell us a little bit about yourself Absolutely. and uh, t t tell our viewers about Coho? Sure, so um, my name is, background is product management. I've been doing product management storage for 15 years. So I come from the Veritas background, doing block storage, plus a file system, the old Veritas story, and realized you know, a while back that IP storage is the future, and Coho had a fantastic story in the way to integrate a software-defined networking and the storage stack. And it's really what's doing a very nice twist and very different and very useful twist from a customer perspective where they're able to simplify the environment by integrating these two typically very disparate components. Yeah, uh, so unpack that a little bit for us. So my, my understanding is that the software-defined networking is really a tool inside your solution so that helps with the storage. You guys aren't trying to knock Cisco off of their perch or anything right. like that. Yeah, so we use a standard open flow protocol to integrate into today's and Arista switch. Just happened to be what we picked at the time and we we're hardware independent from that perspective. Uh, we're, our, our intention is not to provide a software-defined networking hardware, it's merely using the functionality within the, the switch itself. Okay, so why is Coho at the OpenStack Summit? Well, OpenStack is, if you go back 15 years, Linux just got us started. We saw the same momentum in OpenStack a couple of years ago, and it's an extremely exciting conference because it has the momentum of changing the industry and, and the way it's being managed and, and run in inside a data center. Coho's architecture fits extremely well into the scale out, new thinking of doing storage management, where we have an object-based storage architecture in the back with scale linearly SCI boxes, and it fits really well into the OpenStack mantra of open, compute, open scale, and so forth. Okay, so can we expect to see Cinder support from you guys sometime in the future? Absolutely. Cinder and Glance, and even exposing our object APIs. Okay. Well, that will be further out because we're more focused on the Cinder and the simplicity of use. I mean, something that unique with Co is the simple to use. A single access point, a single very easy to use UI. We want to maintain that as we introduce OpenStack support into the product. Right, so, so Doug, I mean, are you guys part of the developer community that, that, that's building this? Are you committing code to uh, OpenStack? We, we will be. So this is our first foray into OpenStack. We're super excited to be here. So come, come as the VMworld rolls around, we'll probably see uh, more announcements of us around OpenStack, and, and also as joining the community and so forth to provide code and provide the expertise from a storage and Zen background into the OpenStack community. All right, so since you brought up VMware, you know, let, let's talk, where, where do you guys sit with kind of virtualization? Some of the discussions we've been having at this event, uh, obviously there's plenty of customers that have VMware, want mm -hmm. VMware, going to do VMware on OpenStack. Uh, some in the community are looking at OpenStack as a way to uh, you know, make an infrastructure that I can put KVM on it. Uh, and then there's others that are just saying, you know, I'm going to use bare metal and containers uh, to be able to do OpenStack. Uh, you know, would, are you guys agnostic to that or, you know, where do you sit in this? It's a great mix? question. Yeah, we're definitely agnostic. We choose to start with VM and merely because they're dominant market share. Now with OpenStack, we would introduce KVM into the mix. Uh, come that, we also look at Hyper-V because that's also a big part of the market as well. And also, clearly physical access to our storage, whether it's NFS protocol or SMB protocol, is extremely important to us. And that's probably following a timeline similar to that. All right, um, so d give us the, 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 the company, can you, can you just give us some of, the, some of the basics on it? When did you guys come out of stealth? Are you guys sure. GA with your product, uh, you know, funding rounds <laughs> and the like? Absolutely, so uh, the company's been about almost three years in the making, the product, I should say. Uh, we came out of stealth about six months ago, so October last year. Uh, our funding has been 10 and 25 million in two rounds. Uh, the first GA of the product came in uh, about two months ago now. So right when I joined the company, we went GA with a product, and 1.0, 1.1 coming out this week. So we're moving very rapidly. That's expected by a startup, to be honest. And the, nice, the innovation pace is very, very fast, and that's why OpenStack support is also going to come very fast. All right. Uh, what, what are you hearing from your customers in regards to OpenStack? 
a lot of interest. So a big part of the customer base is service providers. And as seen here, and as some of the biggest sponsors are OpenStack, it clearly service providers is a big key piece of OpenStack. And so we're seeing service provider interest, the pay as you grow model fits really well in that environment, and as well as the openness of OpenStack. And be able to integrate it. And as you grow your environment, you can easily grow your storage and compute and network. Okay. And so that's where it's coming from. So service providers, uh, what, what's your scalability story then? Can you can you talk a little bit about to how you scale and how, how sure. big you can scale? Uh, our scale is very linear today. So you can run a simple benchmark, just to run as much IOS as you can from you know to our solution. We get about 180,000 IOPS, 4K, random, 8020, you know, mix out of one to you chassis. And as you keep adding chassis, what we've proven is you can scale. And we've tested in that benchmark up to 10 chassis, so 20 microarrays, what we call microarrays. And that scales linearly. So we, we get over a million IOPS from that environment, well past a million IOPS. And it's nice to see that linear scale. What you see, what we do in the background as we scale, that this is where the SDN switch comes in and, and the software defined network is that as we're able to reprogram the data path behind the switch and therefore move clients from an overloaded array into a newly brought up system automatically without any system intervention. So if you look at the curve, you'll see a, a, a straight curve, a little dip when we do rebalance and a, and a linear scale up. And we also have a paper on that where people can read the details and from a ESG and certified you know, external analyst. So it's, the interest is being able to add it in without any intervention. You literally plug in, physically turn on, wait 15 minutes, and that's it. So. All right. Uh, can, can you talk to us a little bit about how management uh, of your environment is done? You know, are, are you still a c considered a traditional storage box that a storage team does? How does the networking team play in? And with, with uh, you know, OpenStack, you know, usually looking at more kind of orchestration automation. Mm -hmm. how, how does your solution compare to kind of you know a traditional storage array that people are familiar with? Right. So we, we try to think things very very simple. So our mantra with our customers is to keep things in a no touch environment. So we have an extremely simple to use UI where you just with a few clicks you can see what's most relevant, what is maximum performance, what's using the most capacity and so forth. Uh, from, a, from a comparison to let's say a traditional vendor like EMC or Hitachi, where you roll in a box, you spend some time configuring it, you spend some time creating groups and, and, and volume groups, we don't have that at all. We, you literally plug it in, first time set up about an hour from literally power on to when you're done. And then all you do is keep plugging the race in. And uh, everything is taken care of in the back end. And we have no user intervention required at all. So it's a very different experience as you move on. And as we move new hardware architectures into the box, as we move to the next version, it's all fully supported to run different versions. So the, the migration doesn't really happen. We don't need it. You buy another hardware, you plug it in, and our system will automatically see when you need to move data to it. If you need more performance from your box, we'll automatically relay that and, and move the data behind the scenes. So again, no user intervention at all. So we're taking a more of a cloud-like mantra. So I mean, when you go to Amazon, you just say, I want this many CPUs and this much storage, and that's exactly what we're thinking. And this is where the integration of the OpenStack is, is so exciting to us, because we obviously don't do the commute. We're not a converged storage box. Uh, we do storage only. Uh, clearly, we use networking to simplify the environment, but we also want to benefit from that deployment of a customer. They say, yeah, I just want this much storage and this much compute, and we simply just follow those rules. So, uh, you know, Doug, we, we've seen huge growth in the converged infrastructure market, uh, you know, t trying to simplify that environment. Um, do you think you guys do enough if you're only focused on the storage piece of it? If you look at the storage market, it's very, very big. Uh, we believe there's plenty of room for us to grow. Uh, at some point in the future, perhaps, there'll be room to grow in different directions, but for now, we're going to be focused on storage and really revolutionizing that together with the next evolutionary data center, which is not the old create a LUN and map a file system to it, just to create everything as a pool and, and share storage as needed. Yeah, uh, and it, yeah, Doug, I definitely agree. There's there's huge opportunity in the storage market. Flash is really kind of shaking everything up. Um, you know, everything from server-based solutions to all Flash arrays. Um, I, I haven't heard you talk much about Flash. You know, what, what do you guys think about Flash as the architecture, and how does that fit into your environment? So Flash to us is extremely exciting. We were able to use Flash in a way that we couldn't imagine using storage in the old days. Today, when we have Flash, we're able to metric, for example, every I/O and trace every I/O coming into the box without any overhead at all to overall capacity of the box. So we use Flash as a tier one, tier, tier zero storage area today where we, when you, everything ends up in the box, ends up on Flash. Uh, and as data becomes less relevant for the user, we move it off to a hard drive environment. Today we are a hybrid array. Uh, it doesn't mean we'll say hybrid forever, but that's definitely where we're at today. And yeah, we use Flash for extremely fast and low latency IOs. And that's it enabled us to do things we couldn't imagine possible with storage five years ago. It's really, really in, in interesting. What, what's the most interesting part is that you can saturate a single 10 gig interface with a single flash card. 
And that's something you did not see three years ago. And we think that will change even going forward in the future. So finding a system that provides the right balance between network, CPU, and flash is going to be critical for scale. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a big mismatch and server virtualization came in. It, it caused a lot of challenges with, SOAR, with, with, with storage and networking. Now storage with flash uh, is causing challenges with networking and, and we're trying to do that. Um, you know, let, let, let's talk about the economics of, this, of mm -hmm. the solution. Um, if I look at your box, is it you know, a less expensive alternative to traditional storage? Is it the operational model that you make it up? Some combination of it? Do, do you have any metrics you can share? Yeah, sure. So we can, we, I'm happy to share the list price. It's well, most, when we look at the most, it's really the operational model. Uh, we come in at a, we are going after the enterprise space, so we price for an enterprise user. We start at 130,000 list, and that's about 40 terabytes of raw storage, if people can do the math. Uh, that includes the SDN switch. So as you grow in your environment, that cost obviously lowers as well. What you benefit the most from us is not only the high performance, 180,000 IOPS per 2U, you also benefit from the no operational law, uh, operation of the model. You plug in, it's, it's plug and go. You don't have to buy a huge array to start with and then grow that with spindles. You buy a small chassis and you grow when you need more capacity and or performance. So it makes it very, very simple. And that's really where we need to move. You need to be able to consume storage as a utility, not as an extensive, here's my three year plan for storage and therefore I need to buy this much. Buy what you need for next year, for your budget year, and then you can easily go beyond that. So, Doug, uh, you know, it, it, it's tough to get a foothold in the marketplace. Is there a specific use case or, you know, as you, you've had these first couple of customers, uh, you know, that, that, that have been buying, you know, what, what is kind of the hook for them and, uh, sure. you know, how are you trying to get that, that first uh, start in the market? So, you know, as a product manager, I, I, I'm extremely interested in use cases, clearly, because that's what I do for a living. Uh, what we've seen the most, the top two ones so far has been, and not the surprising, VDI. So, a lot of customers are interested in VDI. Uh, it's also probably, from a product management perspective, the least exciting, to be honest. It works really well, but it's not necessarily one that's difficult to solve. Uh, the more interesting one we've seen lately is Oracle databases and the low latency access. So our box was very low latency performance, and we've seen customers coming in and saying, I want to move my low latency parts of their database environment, uh, specifically Oracle in our case, uh, to your box and see how that performs so they can increase the overall performance of the solution. And that's probably the top two I would pick for now. And as we, over the next few months, I'm sure we'll add a few more that are a bit more different from the sale address of the world. Yeah, Doug, to, to be honest, from, from Wikibon's uh, standpoint, we'd agree with you. Uh, VDI definitely is growing, yeah. but is not necessarily the most interesting. There's a lot of solutions attacking that. Yeah. There's huge opportunity on the Oracle side, and if you talk from a financial standpoint, we've done a lot of research that says that this is where you know companies can save huge amounts of money because it's such a mission critical piece and, and can really you know chop down. Um, so, can you talk to us a little bit about at this show? Uh, you know, what, what are you guys doing? I know you guys have a booth. You've got a bunch folks here, uh, you know, what's, what are you looking forward to at this event? Sure, so, so far the show, by the way, has been fantastic. It's extremely busy down in the booth. I'm, I'm extremely happy to be here. Uh, we do a few things. One, we look for design partners for OpenStack. So as we build our products, especially as a startup, we want to make sure we build a product that's most, that's most, most interesting to most customers. We were looking for a couple of key design partners that are able to get early access, early access to, to our drops and hardware to see how that can provide value in their environment. Uh, second, we want to have interactions with the customers and obviously show off our product. So we have a demonstration downstairs. We have this awesome new chalk whiteboards in the background, be able to show and have really in-depth conversations, uh, which so far has been fantastic. So it, it's we have, you know, product management, technical marketing, and engineering represented here at the show. So some really good opportunity for people to get into the depths of the product and understand our strategy going forward. All right, so uh, OpenStack Summit, I expect we'll see you guys at the VMworld show yes. uh, later this year. Um, you know, what, 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 what are you looking out as a, as a product manager? You always have to make your bets as to, you yes. know, what you, th there's always a million things you guys could work on. Uh, so, you know, wh wh where do you set? What are, what are the top priorities? What are the big things? Is it, you know, you know real-time big data applications? Or, you know, what, what, what are the hot things right. on your plate? A few hot things. Clearly, OpenStack is one of them. Otherwise, we would not be here and developing for it. Uh, VMworld support and VMworld support will continue as we, and VMware is a huge part of what we, the market we're going after. Uh, the other part is, it's going to be databases. It's going to be a database and a scale. Uh, next year we'll introduce physical NFS for everybody and that will be even more important to have that scale behind the scenes. And what you'll see later this year is even greater scale, you'll see even greater performance from our, with, our, with our next major release. And that's going to be extremely exciting because that will bring us into new areas of where the SAN traditionally has lived. Now you can actually support that with an NFS workload which is quite fantastic. That's really going to be in, in a more enterprise worthy. When you look at a solution, highly resilient, highly redundant, you want to make sure it stays that way, and I wouldn't see us venture too far outside of that. All right. Um. 
did your solution, does it tie it all to any of the public cloud environments to use it for backup or anything like that? Uh, nothing I can speak to at the moment. Okay. So. All right. Uh, so, Doug, I want to give you the last word on this segment. Sure. Uh, I, I know you've only had a little bit of time to, you know, look at the show, but you've been keeping an eye on OpenStack for yeah. a while now. Uh, you know, why, why is this point in time, you know, critical for, uh, you know, really, you know, the, the, the future of IT infrastructure right. and, what, and what's happening? Yeah, so I want to, again, correlate back to Linux. I lived through Linux for 10 years of it. And it took about seven, eight years for it to become an enterprise product. I see OpenStack moving with almost about three times that speed. It's moving very rapidly. And I think it's not the right time for companies to take that big step in and start not only dibble dabble in it, but actually start deploying it in production. We, we see that from our customers and that there's a lot of interest, but they're afraid of taking the next step. And I think they need to take a step back and look at you know, what am I really want to achieve in three years as a big IT organization. And OpenStack is a fantastic opportunity to, to, to move them to the next level where they need to be. All right, and I got one last question for you. Coho data, so Coho are the same and they swim upstream. Is there, <laughs> is there something in the name or kind of the founding story that, that, that speaks to that? Uh, we originally would call a different name. Uh, I won't even try to pronounce it on the name because it's, it's really, we want to stay with Coho data. We, we obviously, we're going into scale out NAS. Yeah. You can think that's crazy. There's so many big players in this space. Why would we do it? We, we fundamentally believe we have something that's totally different from every other system player. And we're happy to swim a bit upstream before we were ready for, you know, to lay our eggs under that basket. And we're doing really well so far, and it's, it's, it's been a fantastic ride. All right, well, the, the, the salmon always have a tough journey, but when they get there, uh, you know, they're excited uh, and everything. So, Doug, really appreciate you coming here, OpenStack Summit, uh, sharing uh, the, the story of Coho Data with, with our audience. And this is Stu Miniman. We'll be right back uh, with our next guest after this break.